Happy Monday, September 22nd, 2025. You're listening to KoeiCast, where we make the robots do the boring stuff so creators can cook. I'm Riley. And I'm Hunter. Quick heads up before we dive in. Today's episode was made completely with AI. We're battle testing Microsoft Vibe Voice 7B end to end. If a syllable gets weird, that's our co-pilot hitting a pothole. Honestly, I love the chaos. Okay, today's story. Descartes just dropped Lucy Edit Dev, an open-weight, text-guided video editor you can actually pull from Hugging Face and run locally. The pitch is wild. You type, replace the jacket with a red satin bomber, and your dolly shot survives. Yeah. The edit is the prompt, and the camera move survives. That's the whole vibe. It's instruction following video to video that prioritizes temporal consistency. So your motion, blocking, composition, those stay intact while the wardrobe or background changes. So, not a web toy. Not click to bling with artifacts. This is natural language in, coherent edit out, and you can wire it into your pipeline. That's the thing that matters for ops. Exactly. What's actually new for automation is the combo open weights, instruction native editing, and real temporal stability. Open weights means you can run it where you work, private GPUs, inside your governance without waiting for a gated demo to load. Let's translate that for creators. Who's this for? If you're a YouTuber or a brand running a lot of content, you can prototype wardrobe swaps, background changes, product inserts on your own footage without reshoots. And for teams, it plugs into local Python jobs or node graphs. There's already a comfy UI node pack floating around, so you can chain it with upscalers, captioning, or QC nodes. If you've got a job queue and a few modern GPUs, you're in business. Wait, licensing check. Can I ship client work with dev? Not with dev. Lucy Edit Dev is non-commercial. Perfect for R&D, pilots, and internal benchmarks. For production paid campaigns, AB at volume, you'd go Lucy Edit Pro via Descartes platform or the partner API through FAL. That's where you get a proper hosted endpoint, higher reliability, and commercial use. Got it. Dev for proof, pro for production. That's the dual lane strategy. I do like that you can prototype on your own clips, get the prompt right, then flip to the API and scale. It's a clean migration path. And because it's instruction following, your prompt becomes a spec you can version store it in Git or your asset manager. Replace jacket with red satin bomber, keep reflections neutral, no logo change. That spec becomes repeatable automation. Okay, let's talk use cases. My favorite, localization without reshoots. You want winter looks for Canada, summer looks for Miami, and a Tokyo at night background for APAC, same performance, different styling, done. And programmatic AB. Make 10 wardrobe variants, send them to testing, then only finish the winner in pro. That's real cost control, less color time, fewer reshoots, less editorial thrash. Also, brand safety cleanup. Remove a background extra wearing a competitor's logo, or add a product on the counter. That's the boring fix we all hate doing by hand. It's also fast for pitch to production continuity. Run a concept cut with dev, show stakeholders, iterate on the instruction design, then switch to pro or foul for the final high volume render with the exact same text brief. Hmm, instruction design. Give people a prompt skeleton. Think 20 to 30 words, verbs plus nouns plus attributes. Replace the denim jacket with a red satin bomber, glossy finish, keep original lighting, preserve logo placement, no change to hairstyle. Be explicit about what to keep. It respects constraints. Let's hit workflow stack. If you're solo, how do you actually use it? Today, pull the open weights, run a local script, and batch process clips. If you like node-based, load the comfy UI workflow and map inputs. For non-technical folks, Descartes has a browser demo to preview the vibe. When you're ready to automate at scale, use the Pro API through FAL, send media URLs, and the text instruction, get an MP4 back with webhooks. And we should be clear, dev is prototype grade. It's solid on shot integrity, but you still need QA. Look for flicker on fast motion, identity drift if you push too far, and style mismatch if lighting is extreme. Totally. Build a quick review step thumbnail grid across keyframes, maybe a motion heat map. If you're fancy, add an automatic flicker detector and flag shots over a threshold. Competitive check. Where does this land versus runway, Pika, or dream machine? Those are amazing for generation, but closed. You can't audit the sausage. Here, open weights means teams can benchmark on their own footage, adjust, and ship inside their walls. Yeah, and the hosted pro lane puts it back on equal footing with the closed tools API, reliability, scale. It's both open for R&D, hosted for production. That dual track is where a lot of serious shops are heading. Does this replace tools in the stack? If you're already patchworking still image editors plus hand masking in Premiere, yeah, this could consolidate. Maybe you keep your upscaler and delivery tools, but the core edit logic shifts to a single model. And it speeds up teams. 
A social team could go from research to outline to shot list to edit variants to platform cuts in a day. The content becomes a parameter set. Speaking of speed, throughput, and cost, on dev you control GPUs and the queue, so cost per minute depends on your hardware. On pro via foul, you pay per job. If you're a marketer, that means try internally, price externally. Good hygiene. Let's hit a real scenario. TikToker with a fashion account, record a single try on video. Use Lucy Edit Dev to swap outfits to four seasonal palettes. Auto caption, auto music stems, then send to four regional accounts. No reshoot, more reach. Podcast Studio. Record a host in one outfit. Use Lucy Edit Dev to test sponsor aligned styling, sneaker colorways, hoodie branding, then commit the winning look in pro for the deliverables. The camera move stays, the vibe changes. Brand marketer, product in a kitchen spot. Insert the new flavor on the table and change the backsplash to on brand color while keeping the hand action and reflections intact. Then fire off language localized voiceovers that match the region, all from the same brief. Can we geek for a second on why the motion holds? It's a modern video backbone with a high compression variational autoencoder feeding a diffusion transformer. Translation, it learns to plan across frames so the edit rides the original motion instead of hallucinating a new shot. And that's the difference between wow and why did my hero teleport. You want the performance you shot, not a new one the model invented. Availability check. You can pull Lucy Edit Dev weights on Hugging Face right now. There's a non-commercial license. For Hosted Pro, hit Descartes' platform or the FAL API. Pro supports higher reliability and, from what we've seen, 480p and 720p routes for video-to-video. -video. If you just want to poke, there's a web demo for quick previews. If you're building a pipeline, add the unglamorous stuff, retries, webhooks, observability, and version pinning. Treat the model like any other service in your stack. Okay, risk and reality. Guardrails that might pinch creativity? Non-commercial means no shipping campaigns on dev. Compute. You need modern GPUs, otherwise latency will hurt. And brand safety isn't automatic. Still put a human in the loop to review sensitive content before it goes live. Also, don't try to fine-tune it with proprietary footage. This is inference. Keep your data clean, keep access tight, and log everything. How nervous should competitors be? Anyone selling pure point-and-click AI edits with no API or governance, this leapfrogs that. The open weight angle pressures the market to be more transparent and automation friendly, but hosted leaders with strong pipelines and editors still have an edge on production polish. Trends wise, this is part of instruction native post production. We're moving from timeline first to brief first. Creative direction becomes executable code. Human taste sets the intent, machines do the variance. Meme it for me. Mom said we have wardrobe at home, but the home wardrobe is crisp, on model, and doesn't ruin your steady cam move. Ha. Huh. For folks listening, how would we use this inside COE, today? I'd spin an N8N flow, watch an S3 bucket for a new cut, auto-generate three instruction briefs from a brand-style doc, send those to Lucy Edit Dev on local GPUs, dump the outputs to a review board. A human picks the winner, then we flip the same instruction to Pro via API, render the deliverables, and trigger captions and social crops downstream. And because it's instruction native, the brief is the contract across the whole pipeline. Audio alternates, lower thirds, pack shots, everything keys off the same text. That's how you keep typography and color rules in sync. Last thing, how to talk to it. Be concrete, turn the alley into Tokyo at night, neon signage, keep existing rain reflections, do not alter subject's hairstyle or skin tone, say what to change and what to protect. And be ready to iterate. If a sleeve glitches, add preserve sleeve texture to the prompt. Treat it like you would notes to an assistant editor, polite but precise. Bottom line, Lucy Edit Dev is your R&D green light for instruction-guided video edits you can actually automate. Pro is your scale lane when money's on the line. If you're building a modern content engine, this is a real unlock. That's the show. Thanks for hanging with us on this very AI-powered Monday. For more AI news and workflow breakdowns, hit koei.com resources. And if this was useful, subscribe so you don't miss the next drop. Appreciate you all. Catch you next time.